Hey, what's up, guys? So this story I'm about to tell you is one that um, happened in a county jail. And um, I happened to be in an open unit at the time. What I mean by that is rather than a small maximum security lockdown unit where you're in single man or double man cells, um, this was more like a dorm, like three-story, big, open, and, you know, all open tiers and just little cutouts where there's like four to eight beds pushed in the corners there and everybody has like a little area. So it's 150 people in that, you know, one area living space sharing this unit. And um, I rem there's this guy there, like a middle-aged white guy, you know, he doesn't fit the bill for the typical inmate. He's scared to move, you know, he's really you know, not safe, way out of his element there, doesn't have any friends or anything. And uh, he'd been there maybe for a couple weeks, and I saw him at visits a couple times. He sat close to me, and I saw that he had family and what looked like, you know, good people supporting him, coming to visit him. I think, you know, uh, he has a daughter there, like a teenage daughter that visited him along with his wife and some others. So... I didn't know the guy, you know, we spoke a couple times here and there casually, I'm pretty, you know, cool with everybody, but I didn't know him personally like that. Nevertheless, um, one day I was in my area, you know, doing what I was doing, you know, working out, reading, just minding my own business, staying out of trouble, and uh, I noticed that there was like a group of people, like a commotion going on, you know, down the cell block, and... I got up and I went over and I saw what was happening. These people are all watching this guy. He's lying on his bunk and he's fucking having a heart attack. And, you know, I, I saw it and right away, you know, I called out to the cops and I'm saying, you know, CO, this guy needs help. He's having a heart attack. And these fucking cops, man, they told me to shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up and mind your own fucking business. So I don't know what to do you know, to help the guy. I'm also afraid and hesitant to even touch him and try to help him because I know how that shit goes. You know, if I put my hands on this guy in any way and something happens to him, I could very likely end up with a body, with a murder charge. They could very well implicate me and charge me. So there's a huge liability in trying to help people under certain circumstances, especially incarcerated one like that. So I couldn't do anything. You know, I didn't know what to do. I, I started arguing with the cops and trying to get another one and screaming out to them. I was banging on the fucking uh, central window to try to get some more cops. And I can't believe it. You know, they come into the unit like, what the fuck's going on? And I told them, I'm like, this guy's over there fucking dying. He's having a fucking heart attack. He needs help. And you know what these fucking guys told me? They told me to shut the fuck up. They said, Hollywood, mind your fucking business. It's not your problem. You know that man? You related to that man? I said, no. They said, so mind your fucking business and worry about yourself. I couldn't fucking believe it. I could not fucking believe it. And they told me to stay the fuck away from him. Don't even go back to his fucking area. Go back to your area and stay the fuck away. I couldn't believe it. So, you know, probably like 10 minutes, you know, went by. And this fucking poor man, I'm watching this guy fucking die. I'm watching this guy struggle to breathe and, and fucking, you know, it was... It was terrible to see what what was happening to him. His body started convulsing and started fucking shaking and twitching and shit. And I watched this whole fucking thing unfold. And, you know, finally, a sergeant came in. So, somebody came in from all the banging and shit that I was doing and noted it and cared. Maybe they didn't care. Maybe they just, you know, were concerned about being liable, finally. And they called in fucking a team to get him out of there, took him out on a stretcher, and, you know, within an hour, I get word back that he's dead. You know, the, the guy died. And it just fucking ate me up. It ate me up because first I couldn't help him. That bothered me. You know, I wish I could have helped him. I felt so helpless. But what the fuck do I do? I'm not a fucking doctor. I don't know what to do in that capacity. I couldn't also do anything. I was prevented because of my circumstance, even if I knew what to do. But... You know, the, the thing that bothered me more than anything else was these fucking cops, man. If they just would have fucking listened to me and been fucking human about this and fucking helped the man. I don't know what the fuck this man was in there for. I don't know what his crime was. I don't know what it was. It could have been some fucking horrendous shit that, I, that I'm against. But whatever the case is, the man is fucking having a heart attack. And that's not the way it's supposed to go down. He's in fucking custody of the state. 
It's not supposed to go down like that. He's not supposed to die as a result of neglect and as a result of piece of shit fucking cops. You know, and, and for me at that time to, to have witnessed that, I wanted to kill these fuckers. That's my first reaction. If this shit was in the streets and this is a different time, these motherfuckers would be now the targets. The targets of my fucking rage because of what kind of piece of shits they are. How the fuck could a man do that? How could they do that? Be entrusted to a fucking job where they're getting paid to fucking do this shit. And let these guys fucking die. And that's not the first time I've seen fucking cops being responsible for death. I've seen it happen in other cases where it was literally at their hands. They fucking murdered people. But in this case, you know, with this story, I just wanted to share this with you guys. So, you know, for those that aren't aware, it's a fucking jungle in jails and prisons. You know, you're not safe. You're not safe. Nobody there gives a fuck. You're on your own. And it's a struggle to come out of that jungle unfazed. You know, because most people come out. But the degree to which you're fucking damaged varies. And for me, even shit like this it didn't directly happen to me, but it did in the sense that it fucking bothers me to this day. So many years later, it fucking bothers me that that man lost his life for nothing. And all I think about is that he had his family there every week visiting him. This was a man who was loved and he fucking died for nothing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this story. Thank you.